Have you ever wanted to find better ways to solve problems and build stronger relationships in both your professional and personal lives? Welcome to Brain Fishing. My name is Gary Furlong. I'm a full-time mediator and negotiator. My job is to work with difficult people all day long. This video looks at why difficult people are, well, difficult, and what we can start to do about it. Here's a quick quiz. When talking to a difficult person, do you feel like nothing gets done? Do they refuse to even listen? Have you been interrupted so many times you start fantasizing homicide? Difficult people. We dislike them. We avoid them. Worse, we sometimes give in to them just to get rid of them. We do everything except get what we want or solve the problem. The solution to difficult people is brain fishing. Here's what's happening when you run into a difficult person, whether it's in your workplace, as a customer, even in your family. Every one of us comes out of the factory with not one, but two brains. Neurobiologists have identified the many parts and structures in our brain, but boiled way down, we have what amounts to two completely different brains. And each brain has different uses, different strengths, and different weaknesses. When things get difficult, the problem is that we're talking to the wrong brain in the other person, and may in fact be using the wrong brain ourselves. Two brains. The first brain we'll call the red brain. Biologically, this brain includes the amygdala, the limbic system, and the basal ganglia. It's sometimes called the reptilian brain, but ignore all of that. Here's what's important. The red brain is a very powerful brain that handles critical functions for us. Breathing, heart rate, blood pressure, reflexes, etc. It gathers information 24-7, day and night, and it never sleeps. We also store habits and other unconscious behaviors in our red brain. But the red brain, as powerful as it is, has only one function, and that's our protection and survival. That's it. Its job is to keep us safe and alive, nothing more. It doesn't care if we're happy or if we get along with others, only that we survive. To do this, it constantly scans our world, putting everything into one of two categories, a threat or a treat. If it sees something as a treat, it simply takes it or tries. Have you ever been to a party, walked by a table full of sweets and suddenly found one in your mouth and three on your plate? That's your red brain. It sees a treat and it takes it. When your red brain sees a threat, however, and it sees many, it leaps into action. With threats, it has two broad reactions to protect you, the classic fight or flight. It will either get aggressive, attack, argue, deny, demean, and yell, or it will deflect, minimize, avoid, and flee. In red brain land, this is how you are kept protected. The red brain can be very helpful though. Remember, we store habits in the red brain. Have you ever been preoccupied with something, get in your car to drive home, and when you get there, you actually can't remember the trip home at all? That's your red brain. It said, hey, I know the way, I'll drive. You worry about the other thing. Difficult people, as we call them, are often just stuck in their red brain. They use it a lot. And worse, their red brain often makes us feel angry or unsafe, which triggers us into our red brain. Remember this the next time you're arguing with a client, a coworker, or a spouse. With both of you in red brain, it's an exercise in futility. Red brains are not there to solve anything. They're just there to protect their owner. But here's the good news. We all have a second brain. We call that our blue brain. Our blue brain is the brain that evolved much later in humans and consists largely of the prefrontal cortex. The blue brain is also a powerful brain, but in a very different way. It's capable of sustained analytical thought. It can solve complex problems, handle large amounts of information, and make rational decisions effectively. It's also the seat of our consciousness. When I say I, I'm referring to my blue brain. It's the blue brain that applies rational thought to solve difficult and complex problems. So why don't we just use our blue brain all the time? Good question, here's why. First, the blue brain operates much slower than the red brain, about five times slower. So when an issue arises, 
The red brain is on the job before the blue brain's even out of bed. Secondly, it's costly to operate. Our brains use about 20% of our body's energy. Most of that goes to the blue brain. Because of the high energy cost of running our blue brain, we are biologically designed to use the blue brain as little as we possibly can get away with. We are all what the eggheads and scientists call cognitive misers. If we can leap to a conclusion instead of thinking about it, we do. If we can make an assumption rather than take the time to gather information and analyze the issue, of course we do. And even worse, the blue brain is a thinker, not a fighter. It can't and won't defend itself. Under stress, it disappears and hides behind the red brain. After all, that's what the red brain's for. Back to our, quote, difficult people. In fact, these people aren't difficult by nature at all. They're just letting their red brain run the show. And we're spending all of our time talking to it. Their red brain will argue, deflect, and push back, or it will simply avoid, and we won't get anywhere. We are wasting our time arguing with the bouncer at the door when we need to be inside talking to the manager. So, what can we do? We need to stop talking to their red brain and engage their blue brain. It's that simple. We need to calm their red brain down so their blue brain can come out to play. How do we do this? Brain fishing. Brain fishing is the skill of directly engaging a person's blue brain instead of their red brain. We need to learn how to coax, entice, tease their blue brain, lure it out of hiding, make it feel safe. We need to hook its interest, fish for what's important to the blue brain, and avoid threatening the red brain. We need to engage the best part of both of us, our blue brains, to solve the problem. When your blue brain works directly with their blue brain, things get done. And you both walk away feeling calm, productive, and, well, human. Watch the next video in this series, How Do I Make Someone Listen? Maybe even think. And I'll show you exactly how we do this, whether you're talking to a difficult client, difficult coworker, even a difficult manager. When you start brain fishing, you'll find there's a lot fewer difficult people in your world. All of a sudden. This brain fishing series focuses on the skills, tools, and mindset for solving problems and building effective relationships in many different settings. Subscribe to the YouTube Brain Fishing channel to see all the videos. If you'd like to learn more about how brain fishing can help you or your organization, Visit us at brainfishing.ca for more. Much more. Happy brain fishing.